Hey, thanks a lot for joining us. This is our final show of the season, previewing two of the biggest games of the season. Myself, Ross, along with Bob Holmes, Arvin Sidhu, and Craig Marias, will give you all the latest news from Portugal and Germany. As usual, get in touch via uh, social media. You can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. We're going to start then, guys, with the Europa League final. It's Sevilla versus Inter Milan. It's a Saturday 3 a.m. kickoff. Uh, five-time winners, Sevilla, take on three-time champions, Inter Milan. It's five-time winners because they've also won the old UEFA Cup. But, I mean, it's, it should be called the Sevilla Europa League. <laughs> Arvin, we saw when they beat Man United in the semi-final that they, they actually don't mind playing the big boys and they're pretty good at it. They don't. And really, they're, they're a hard team to beat. I mean, they're unbeaten in 20... Um, Defensively, they're very sound, Ross. In La Liga, only Real Madrid and Atletico had a better defensive record. So they, they, they're built on a, on a structure where defensively very sound. While going forward, they're not the most spectacular, but they somehow will eke out results. Now, the only goal that they conceded in the three knockout rounds was the customary Man United Bruno Fernandes penalty. But other than that, they, 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 haven't, they haven't conceded, right? Um, this is really Julian Rapetegui's redemption after mm. not working well with Madrid, the, de- the, 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 the debacle with the Spanish job. And another piece that's very important for them, and we will talk about players as we go along on this preview, has been them reappointing Monchi. Now, Monchi is a sporting director, mm. has come in and completely turned that club around. I think they've had about 28 departures and 17 arrivals, something like that. So, they, they, they've got the personnel right. But like I said, hard to beat defensively sound. Yep. Not great going forward. But they, they eke results out. And they've well, been able to do it a, against the big boys. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's working on, on the pitch at the moment. Bob Holmes, would you say that Sevilla's main strength is their midfield? Yes, I would. Um, I think it's uh, Eva Banega, actually, is their main strength. Um, he was the guy, if you remember, think back to the World Cup 2018 in uh, Russia and the pass of the tournament to Lionel Messi, which he took on his thigh and put in the back of the net. But the pass was Eva Banega's pass. I think the only player capable of such a thing. And we saw glimpses of that against United. And he is the midfield maestro and he is going to be a very difficult guy to subdue, I think, on this occasion. Mm. Craig, they, they've got the two left backs that's, that's made everyone sit up and, and take new notice. Reggion is on loan from, from Real, Madrid. Real Madrid. And, and Jesus Navas is a converted right wing back. Right winger. Yep. Yeah. Can, can they keep the Inter Milan big boys, the, the strike force quiet? Because they're going to have to do a lot of defending, right? I mean, yeah, they, they would have to. I mean, Inter Milan come into this final as, as favourites for me. Um, I, I did, if you remember, single them out. I, I thought they were my favourites for, for the Serie A even. You know, I, I really thought Conte built a good squad. They're going to be occupied. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the system that, that Inter Milan play as well with the 3-5-2. Um, Reggion, uh, I, I, I rate highly and, and Arvin would, would probably know a lot about him um, considering he comes from the Madrid uh, youth team. But this is a guy who's voted La Liga's best left back. Um, and, and that says something. Chelsea are after him. Everton are after him. Um, he, he's come, you know, I, I'm not sure if he's played senior football before this season. But, um, you know, he, he's come with a big, big reputation after the storming season he's, he's had with Sevilla. And, you know, a run to the final of the Europa League does, does his, um, uh, doesn't harm his chances of a move away. Um, and you look at Jesus Navas. I mean, that, that's another really good story because... Um, I mean, we, we all saw him in the Premier League, obviously. Um, we've seen him in La Liga, nippy winger, short, beats his, beats his ball back with ease. Uh, he's got that electric pace, uh, which, which you always want in a winger. But it's a bit of a masterstroke converting him um, to, to that right back role, you know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When, when we saw uh, Jesus Navas uh, as a right winger, we never saw that defensive side to him, did we? Uh, but now, you know, they, they've obviously gone, trained him hard worked on his defensive side and, and, and he's like a new player. We've, we've seen over the years a couple of wingers that have 
converted into into fullbacks, and Jesus Navas is just another one of them. It was yeah. Pep that put him there in the first place, you know. He played through, there with Man City. But, through in, but, but that, wasn't, that was forced, if I remember correctly. And, and forced, but the idea of putting a dainty <laughs> little winger yeah. at fullback was, it took some imagination, didn't all it? Right, all and right, all right. Okay, it was we, that we with give, Dima Kellis. We, we give Pep <laughs> some credit then, all right. Just a little, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, all right, let's take a look at Inter Milan then. Undoubtedly the favourites going into yeah. the tie. Uh, Bob, I think... For me, I really set up and, and took notice because you and I predicted that Shakhtar would fare quite well in the semi-final, but Inter <laughs> Milan totally brushed aside Shakhtar Donetsk, didn't they? I'm glad you said fare quite well. You didn't go as far as to say <laughs> win. <laughs> I'm choosing my words cleverly. This week. I think Arvin also uh, was uh, rather okay. rather yeah, sympathetic to Shakhtar, if I remember correctly. Quiche as well, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, totally outclassed, weren't they? Um, but no, it's Inter, Inter showed their, their class, didn't they? Um, absolutely steamrolled them. And uh, you have to say... Uh, Lukaku, uh, are there any Man United fans who have any feelings of regret now? Do you know what? I mean, Do you know what? Or I, even I, Everton I, fans who <laughs> have regrets. Uh, no, I want to I wanna pipe in and say that he had to leave Man United to become the Lukaku that he is now, really. But uh, <laughs> it, it suits him. Anyway, that, that's, that, let's, let's not go off point here. Um, Arvin, what, what's Antonio Conte done right at Inter then? Okay, so Antonio Conte is a really interesting man. I mean, I find him, um, when you read a lot of interviews of players, they will always talk about the word commitment. This man is just so committed, so driven to get results. But wherever you've looked in the last couple of clubs that he's managed, with Juve, he came in, they were seventh, he got them to the Serie A title. With Chelsea, they were about <clears throat> 10 or 12th, he won them the Premier League. With Inter, he's, become, he's come so close to Juve. But the thing with him is that he's not afraid to ruffle a few feathers. Now, when they got Diego Godin, Diego Godin was supposed to be their cornerstone of that defense. Diego Godin hasn't done it at the early part of the season. He benched him. He benched him for a younger uh, Bastoni, brought him in. Bastoni played well. And now Godin has come in and needed to gain that confidence again. He's brought in the likes of Ashley Young, Victor mm. Moses. Mm. unwanted dead wood at their clubs and playing probably among the best football that they've played in the last couple of years. Yeah. So he's a man who I feel that it's, in, it's contest way or the highway because you know eventually he's going to ruffle a few feathers. He's always got issues with the board. He's always asking for more money. But results-wise, he has delivered. Uh, not, not in the most, most attractive fashion of doing things, but he gets it done. So mm. if you follow the Conte style of doing it, it will get you to where you need to get. Now, this is with Inter, really. So again, I've always talked about Inter having that, that, that mindset, that, that blockage mentally. Can they get to that final line? But this is what they brought him for. So it's going to be a really interesting final, Ross. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Craig, we, we, everyone's talking about Lukaku, Ashley Young, <laughs> and rightly so. But um, there's Lautaro Martinez up front, yeah. who, let's not forget, uh, is pretty handy. And, and the young signing they got from uh, Cagliari, I think it was Barella. He looks pretty yeah. good, doesn't he? In midfield, yeah. Um, for, for me, I mean, you spoke about the severe strengths um, and, you know, Eva Benega well, was pointed out, midfield. Uh, but for me, for Inter, it's up front. Um, the combination that, that Lukaku and Martinez, you know, throughout the season, I think Martinez went through a patch where he wasn't, you know, wasn't scoring goals. But, I mean, between the two of them, you know, they, they, they just gel so well. They work well together. Um, you always look, you know, when you have, when you play two up front, which is really rare these days, by the way. Uh, but when you have uh, two strikers up front, you know, it's, it's all uh, about the combination between the two, the relationship that they have. I mean, we've seen, you know, back when we go way back, we've seen fantastic strike partnerships, you know. This has everything to it. My only, my only concern uh, w with this is, is, you know, after this final, if that, that will continue next season uh, because Martinez is obviously uh, linked with, with Barca and, and Man City. But going back to this, I think 
you, you look at the strike force, and, and for me, like I said, that's their strengths. Mm. I love Brozovic in midfield. Mm. I really do. I'm a, I'm a big Brozovic fan. I think, you know, in the midfield areas, he makes them tick. He's been there a while as well. Um, and, and like you said, it's the, the new signings, the unwanted signings. Conte has his own managerial style. Um, like you said, Victor Moses not wanted. Ashley Young not wanted. He takes them on board. And, you know, you say what you want about the Serie A um, and, you know, it's a slow league and this, that. And, you know, there may be some truth to it. It has improved a lot over the last few years. It really yeah. has. Yeah. Um, and, and Conte, when he took the job, his one thing was to get close to Juve. He, he could have, it could, they could have won the title. They, it was in their hands. They let it go. They had a few dire results, um, especially after the restart. But, you know, for me, Inter going to this as favourites, um, I, I called it. <laughs> I called it early on. Uh, for them to win it, and uh, I'm sticking by that. All right. Um, Bob Holmes, who then will have the edge Saturday morning, 3 a.m., and what do you think is going to happen in the Europa League final? Well, I have to agree. Inter, to me, look favourites. Um, I mean, Seville have got this great record and everything, but how much can you put into history? I mean, we've just heard that they've had a, a massive clear out of personnel. So, I mean, most of those guys have not won this trophy, have they? A few of them have, but, you know, uh, historically, it's like saying, you know, talking about Liverpool or something in the Bob Paisley era. I mean, these guys have all gone. Um, they, you know, they have this record there and it does mean a lot to the club, but the actual players are relatively new. Most of them are new players. And although they carry this banner of being the Europa League club, it's on the day that counts. Mm. And I, I see them being inferior to Inter in almost every department. I think only the goalkeeper, Bono, is a better keeper than Handamovic. Really? And I think... Wow. Uh, I mean, and Danmich got the experience, but Bono's, Bono's performance against United, if that's anything to go by. Um, I thought I mean, really he, annoying, I he, thought, Bob, that was. He's some, he's some keeper. <laughs> um, and uh, they've got Banega. But apart from that, I don't think this is the best Sevilla side mm. we've seen. They've had better teams. That so have go, won. go on then, give us a score. Inter by how many goals? I think by a couple of goals. I think Inter have, are, are clearly superior. Okay. I, I, I would say by two goals. All right. Arvin Sidhu, you're going you're gonna to edge towards Sevilla, and you're going to tell us why, aren't you? Uh, okay, I'm going to go against the grain <laughs> on this one. Um, okay, so Sevilla, we know the record. Every time they've been to a final, they've won it, right? Uh, Eva Banega, with we, what we, wax lyrical about him, uh, it's his last game for Sevilla. He's off to Saudi Arabia after this. He's going to play for Al Shahab. I think he's going to have the, he's going to try and do his best to bring them over the line. But a really interesting story about Eva Banega. Now, this is a man who's got a tattoo on his right leg which says, "Only God understands me," and it's true because in 2012, he forgot his handbrake on his car, and the car reversed over his leg, and he broke his leg, and he was out for six months. Now, this is a real mercurial genius. He's a mercurial genius in, in every sense. I just feel, and I've always felt this way about Inter, even the last few years, it's that mental block, which mm. I think at the end of it, they just, they somehow something happens on the night. And on the final, anything can happen. I'm just going to edge it, Sevilla, um, 2 1, somehow. in my view. Okay. Yeah, somehow. Somehow. Okay. Unconvincing, but Julian Lopetegui is redemption, in my view. On this All point. right, fair enough. Now, Craig Marais, I know you're Inter. Uh, give us a correct score prediction, and how many will Lukaku get? Um, I'm going to go with 2-0. Um, I think Lukaku will get uh, at least one and I think Martinez the other. Um, like I said, you know, I think their strength is, um, you know, Bob was really generous with them and said, you know, maybe only two severe players get to that side. Um, I, I do think, you know, Regin would probably get in there as well ahead of Ashley Young. Uh, but yeah, I think if you look throughout the squad into kind of win in, in most departments, um, two nil for me. Uh, both strikers to get at least one, uh, well, to get one each, um, and yeah, I, I just can't see anything past an Inter win, really. 
but th- right. th- but this is re- this is really the romance of a final, isn't it? The Serbia mm-hmm. president Jose Castro has come on and said Inter has got a budget which is twice the amount of mine, and yeah. it's true because they have. Well, they've twice has money. been kind of. I think they've got more than that. <laughs> they've got more, yeah. yeah. But 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 Sevilla have gone about their way, picking up yeah. little gems yeah, yeah, across yeah. Europe with Monchi. I mean, so it'll be it'll be a nice story. But, if, but, if I mean, for Sevilla to get as far as they have already, I think is true. is a massive true. success for them. Yeah. Um. So yeah. yeah. So so, but. I think this is just a step too far for them. All right. Brilliant stuff. Your Europa League final then is Sevilla against Inter Milan. It is a Saturday 3 a.m. kickoff. And on we go to uh, preview the big one. Oh, big ears. It's the Champions League final. It's PSG against Bayern Munich. Uh, 3 a.m. kickoff. Uh, myself, Ross, along with Bob Holmes, Arvin Sidhu, and Craig Marais here to talk about the big game. Uh, let's start with uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Bob. Uh, they were very impressive in a 3-0 win over Leipzig. We, we've seen... Mbappe and Neymar reunited to devastating effect. And who knew if you threw in an Angel Di Maria, it could work as well. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive uh, front three, isn't it, by any standard? So it's like an all-star, world all-star 11 or something, or world all-star three. Um, two of the most uh, world's most expensive players up front, and they get on. Uh, on the field and off the field, according to reports, they do seem to combine well, which is not always the case when you spend that kind of money on uh, superstars, but they do. And what is significant is that Neymar seems to be finally knuckling down, seems to be becoming more of a team player, less of a prima donna. It's taken a while. Um, and we probably never thought he'd do it. But the recent signs are very much that he's taking this very seriously. And whether he ultimately goes back to Barcelona or not um, is immaterial. He wants to win this trophy. Hmm. And he, he's um, getting through the gears. He, he looked good running through, but his finishing was not quite yeah. there yeah. in the last couple of games. He, he uncharacteristically missed a couple of sitters, frankly. But the dribbling was there. The pace was there. The determination was there. And I think you can put that final act down to a little bit of rustiness. Um, it's all shaping up for him to come, to come good on the night. And Mbappe, who was virtually written off for the rest of this tournament through that injury he sustained, um, not only came back, surprisingly, but actually looked good and seemed to be just about as quick as ever. Mm. So you've got those two there, which means that Bayern Munich, although they probably go into this as favorites, they cannot be complacent. They cannot relax. And I think these, these two guys, the, t- the two superstars, have it in them to actually pull off a shock here. Craig Marias, what's Thomas Tuchel done right at PSG this season? Why, why is it all suddenly clicking this season? Oh, well, clicking is is a bit of an uh, is a bit of an exaggeration. I thought they were really lucky against Atalanta. Um, if Mbappe's injury, um, if, if he didn't recover in time from that injury, you know, I really don't think they would have been in Atalanta. Um, let's not forget Atalanta were, were almost well, were pretty much playing with 10 men um, towards the end of the game uh, with an injury. They ran out of subs. Um, so, you know, the class of Mbappe um, added to the fact that Atalanta were effectively down a man. Um, I think managed to see them over the line. Um, so, so I think there was a little bit of, of, of luck, even though I think they were probably the better side uh, throughout the match. They were just lacking that clinical, um, clinical instinct uh, within the team. Um, but, you know, go on to the semi-final and, and they, they were absolutely fantastic. And, and, you know, it could have been a lot more if Neymar had his shooting boots on. Yeah. Um, what's he done right? I, I think the biggest thing that he has done to get to the Champions League final and the biggest thing that he has done is getting Mbappe fit. I mean, everything else, 
Um, you, you look on paper, they've, they've got an amazing squad from the back all the way to the front. Um, and for me, the, the difference that this guy, I think he's, he's 20 years old now, if that, 19 or 20. I mean, he's just an unbelievable footballer who can change a game even if he's 70% fit. And, and we do know that he's not 100% fit here. But like Bob said, you know, it doesn't look like he's lost a yard of pace. Um, he beats players for fun. He scores goals. Um, he, he can do everything in attacking areas. And, mm. and for me, I mean, when, when you're playing you know, a team like Bayern Munich in the final, when you're playing um, at this stage of, a, of such an important competition, it's so important to have these kind of plays at your disposal. Yeah. Uh, ideally, he would not have wanted to, to, to have brought Mbappe on against Atalanta, but he needed to. And the difference there was pretty much immediate. We saw in the semi-final how good he can be. And now come to the final, you know, I, I just can't wait to see this. And, and I can't call it, to be honest with you. I know mm. Bayern will go into it as slight favourites, but it's just two fantastic teams going head-to-head. All right. Most serious question now, Arvin Sidhu. Did um, Leipzig lose the semi-final to PSG because Julian Nagelsmann was wearing this suit? <laughs> yes. Oh, the amount of mockery that's been on the on the net on this one is his 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 suit faded faster than RB Leipzig. His his suit should have got a red card. Uh, Steve McManaman came out and made fun of it. I mean, Steve McManaman shouldn't have made fun of him because yeah. all the spice uh, boy McManaman spice boys, the Armani suits in the 1996 final. Yeah. But no, uh, I mean Leipzig. I think they were just out of their depth. They 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 they've done well to to come as far as they have yeah. without the without the scoring prowess of Timo Werner. Uh, on the night itself, there were mistakes. Peter Golaski in, in goal made a bad bad error for the second goal, which is pretty much unforgivable at this level of football. On the night itself, they needed the likes of Sabitzer and Kevin Campbell to, to press more. They didn't. I don't know whether it was due to the fact mm. that they felt they were inferior to, to the opposition or maybe a tactics change. Uh, Dayan Upamakana played well, but we've seen him play better than that. So yeah, uh, on the night itself, they they it just they were found out because they just weren't good enough to go past that stage. But they've done really well to get to where they have. But yeah, yep. we will remember Nagelsmann's suit for a few for a few. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. All right then. Well, PSG through to the final, and they are going to take on uh, the favorites of the tournament. Uh, Bob Holmes said is what they are, Bayern Munich favourites. They're playing like favourites. They're looking like a well-oiled German machine that's just going to crush you if you're in their way. Yes. Uh, well, they certainly crushed Barcelona, didn't they? Um, <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, they're overwhelming favourites, I would say. Um, I mean, they have been for some time. I think virtually since the restart, the big restart, they got a big a heads up on everybody when they started sooner than any other league. And I think the Germans were very smart with that. I think that's given them a terrific advantage. Um, so they're, they're well into their season. And they've just gone from strength to strength. And they've dominated everybody. Um, I mean, the only glimmers, I would say, for PSG are... In central defense, Bayern are possibly a little shaky. That's the only place on the field. We saw even in the annihilation of Barcelona, in the first 15 or 20 minutes, Barcelona actually could have scored two or three. They hit the post and they, uh, I wouldn't say Bayern were rocking, but they did look a little vulnerable. And that, I'm not... I don't think that uh, it would have made a fundamental difference to that result, but at least it wouldn't have been 8-2. So there is a weakness there. And uh, as I've said, PSG's great strengths are up front. So you've got Mbappe and Neymar positioned to take, take on and take advantage of Bayern's weakness, relative weakness, in my opinion, in central defense. Mm. Elsewhere, I think they are superior, far superior. Yeah. They've, they've, they've really, and they are more of a team than PSG. I think okay. that's well documented. I want to come to you about in the other parts where they are very superior. Lewandowski is scoring for fun. I think he scored 15 now in, in this year's Champions League. But it is the, the reinvention of Thomas Muller. 
He's only 30. He's been overlooked by Joachim Love for the German national side. Um, the guy can still play football, can't he, Craig? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, his banishment from, from the German national team is, is quite you know, ludicrous, to be honest <laughs> Baffling. With you. Yeah, because, I mean, you look at what he's done for German football. I mean, how prolific he's been, uh, not only in the Bundesliga, but at, at international level, you know. And it's not easy to replicate someone who's not even an out-and-out out striker, let's not forget. You know, I, I'd never class him as, uh, you know, a, in the Lewandowski mode. or He's someone that plays between the lines. He's, he's, he's in and around that 10. He can play out wide. Um, but what a footballer. He really is. And th there was a serious um, danger at the start of the season when Bayern were faltering um, you know there were question marks and you know they almost justified uh, Joachim Lowe's decision um, to, to, to not select him for the national team um, but yeah Hansi Flick comes in and, and rejuvenates him as a player um, and, and not just him you know the whole yeah. team yeah. Um, and, and the job that he has done there is amazing and you know some critics will look at it and say well you know look at that team you know it's hard to go wrong but it did. It was wrong. Um, and, and Bayern were, were just nowhere near uh, like looking like a footballing team. And then, you know, you see, you see the difference that it makes um, from, from Kovac to, um, to Hansi Flick. And, and, it, and he makes these guys enjoy their football again. So, you know, a few tactical things that he, he, he redid, uh, which, you know, you see Bayern uh, flying right now. You know I mean, of bringing Alfonso Davis to the first team. Um, shifting him from a winger to a left back. I mean, there's some that even say that he's, he's one of the best left backs in the world right now. I mean, mm -hmm. he's not even a left back. He's a, he's a left winger, which you can see if you really analyse his performances. I mean, you, you can see him in, a, in, a, in an attacking, um, in an attacking position, how, how good he is in one-on-one -on -one situations as well. Um, but but like, like Bob said, I'll, I'll just go on that, you know, and I think that will be Bayern's weakness. You know, they, they're playing a left winger, at left back. I mean, he's doing fantastically well, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yeah. But he's, he's got that. You've got, you know, a, a Jerome Boateng, who I don't think is 100% fit. Um, you see Sula come on for him um, in the last couple of matches. Um, Kimmich, um, is he going to play right back? Is he going to play in defensive midfield? Uh, Pavard is, is still there to come in. He's mm. not a bad replacement um, either way they go. So um, that would be Biden's weakness for me. And just because of that, just because of that, I never thought I'd say this, but I, I, I think PSG for me, will just go in as slight favourites. All right, then. Um, where will the battle be won and lost, Arvin, um, for you? And, and what do you think is going to happen in the Champions League final? I mean, we've talked so much about, about Kylian Mbappe and, and the speed. And, and, and don't get me wrong, he's a future Ballon d'Or winner. He's an incredible talent. But at the end of the day, Alfonso Davis and Kylian Mbappe, I would pay to see them have a foot race because I think they're the two <laughs> fastest players in the world right now. The, 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 the degree to how Alfonso Davis recovers balls and when he's out of position is absolutely incredible. Um, Bayern defensively are not very sound in, in the centre. They play a very high line. But PSG aren't great centrally in, in, in defence either. They've got mistakes in them as well. So um, at the end of it, um, there hasn't been a team, I believe, that's gone into a Champions League final as much on form as Bayern Munich has. And in my view, they've got the uncrowned Ballon d'Or winner, Robert Lewandowski. This cup has his name written on it. Um, just the experience that he has, the, the way that he's, he's done it. Let's keep in mind, Bayern has taken care of big teams. They've made Chelsea and Barcelona look like amateurs. And like what Craig said, PSG have not had tough opposition so far. They struggled to get past Atalanta. So in that aspect, I just feel that Bayern will, will take this. Um, it was interesting because I read Manuel Neuer come out and say that he felt this, this squad that they have is better than the 2013 squad that had yeah, Bayern that's Robin some and, statement, and Frank isn't Rubri. it? That's some yeah. statement because there's a good balance to it. Mm. If you're worried central def defensively, Leon Goretzka will bully you and get the ball back. So just German efficiency on this one. Neymar and Mbappe will have a huge part to play, but as a unit, Bayern over PSG any day of the week. All right. Well, he's definitely for the Germans. Bob Holmes, you're a romantic. You write football books. I know you are. <laughs> and um, if, if PSG win it, it will be a romance story. Uh, can you see how that could happen? 
Well, I, uh, I disagree a little bit there with the romance. Uh, I mean, the big thing about PSG is that they are the nouveau riche uh, club that everybody hates. It's funded by Gulf uh, oil and gas money. Uh, and uh, they have no history. In France, particularly, they're, they're despised. Um, they haven't got a following around the world. So I, I don't think there's going to be too much romance there. Uh, I mean, they've got, they've got uh, artistic players. I will concede that. Angel Di Maria, certainly. And Neymar. Um, and Neymar, let's face it, Neymar was the third best player in the world a couple of years ago, wasn't he? Three years ago, behind Messi and Ronaldo. And uh, there wasn't too much dispute about that. And then he got injured and lost his way. But he seems to be coming back. And if he's the third best player in the world, then you've got to take him seriously. So, as I say, there's always a chance for PSG. But I'd, I wouldn't consider it a romantic win if mm. PSG was well, to win Well, I'll have them too. It's built, I'm, I'm, it's built on yeah. finance. Ro Bayern... The Hollywood club, German efficiency, you say that. But they've got a guy who was a, a refugee in a Ghanaian uh, refugee camp as yeah. one of their stars. You've got a, a Polish guy from Borussia Dortmund. You've got a Spanish midfielder, Al Alcantara, Tiago Alcantara. You've got Perisic, who was Croatian. I mean, okay, there's a German core there. But it's still a cosmopolitan team, yeah. Bayern Munich, very much so. Um, so, uh, no, I, I don't think it's going to be romantic either way, frankly. Okay, all right. I, I just hope that it's going to be a, a great game. Two un relatively unliked teams are clashing, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad game. I think it could That's be a cracker. And just, just to add, right, I'm not talking about the amount that Kylian Mbappe came for. I'm not talking about the amount that Neymar came for for PSG. This entire Bayern squad, their starting 11, cost lesser than Harry Maguire. So, I mean, in that sense, you, 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 uh, Robert Lewandowski came on a free, Paris yeah, is yeah, on a yeah. free, yeah. Um, they, the, the youngsters that they've brought through. So, in a sense, they, 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 they are known in, in, in Germany for FC Hollywood because they, they pick on the smaller clubs and they bring their best players but they haven't spent a lot of money on this lineup. So you can't compare their lineup costing-wise to PSG. It's just, it's just miles that's, apart, really. That's a great point. Okay. Craig Marias, is there any danger of this being the highest scoring Champions League final ever? Well, what's the highest scoring Champions League final? I actually don't know. I, I, <laughs> don't know I was thinking like... It has to be... Don't ask me that. <laughs> has to be Real Madrid and seven, Eintracht four. Frank Frankfurt. Se seven, seven, four. Seven, seven yeah. three, wasn't it? Seven, seven three. three, seven, three. Yeah. Ten, ten yeah. or eleven goals. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. yeah, that that's not going to be happening. Um, I, I I do think that this is going to be one of the best Champions League finals we've seen in a while, though. I mean, I've loved the Real Madrid and Liverpool battles over the years, and um, I mean, Liverpool, Real Madrid, you know. I thought last year was a little bit boring where Liverpool Spurs. Um, I thought that was a bit of a drab, uh, drab match. But I think this has all the ingredients. You talk of, when you come to this stage, when you come to this level, you want to see the best players in the world play. And no disrespect to Spurs, but we didn't really see world class players on show uh, from, from their side uh, last season. But apart from Harry Kane, probably. But you know, you want to see world-class players you want to see your Neymars and Mbappes and and this this one has world-class players all over it I mean you look at Thiago Silva as well 36 years old probably leaving PSG at the end um after after this uh, after this final um but what a defender he is you know I mean he'll always I think always have the Brazilian national team that debacle that they had in, in, yeah. in the World Cup um over over his over his shadow but I just think he's been an incredible servant um, to, to, to PSG. Um, I'm going to edge PSG on this one. I, I really think they just might have that little bit of quality wow. in the final third. And, and you um, think a little romantic bit of magic. as well, right? You think it's romantic if PSG won? I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it's romantic at all. I mean, throwing money, uh, throwing money and buying, playing football manager. Almost, okay, okay. Um, it is not really uh, a romantic story for me, but 
I mean, that little bit of magic that they have. And, and Bayern have it as well. Don't get me wrong. Bayern have it as well. But I just feel from the left boot of, of Di Maria or whether it's going to be from, from Neymar or, or uh, Kylian Mbappe, I just feel they might have that little bit extra um, in the final third. They'll take it over the line. All right. PSG versus Bayern Munich then is a Monday 3 a.m. kickoff. Now, that should wrap up proceedings for us for the season. We've had a lot of enjoyment doing it, so I've got to thank them all individually. Many thanks, Bob Holmes, for all your input this season. Thank you, Ross. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks to you as well, Arvin Sidhu. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget, Leeds versus Liverpool. First game of the season, <laughs> next season. That's the one. Anfield. Game of the week. I don't know who to cheer for. What about you, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> You're the same as me. Hey, yeah, thanks yeah. for all your work, Craig. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure uh, doing another season with you, Ross. And um, it's been a weird one, but hope you all enjoyed it. And let's look forward to next season now. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye now.